So this video is about four steps to decrease your alcohol consumption to improve your health, improve your mental focus, better skin, you heard that right, and lower body fat. Now, if you are someone that has a real physical dependency on alcohol, right, that means you get withdrawal symptoms when you stop drinking alcohol, then this video is not for you. That is a very dangerous situation. So if you really fall in the category of an alcoholic and you withdraw from alcohol without the guidance of a um, physician or other health professional, you could get something very dangerous called delirium tremens. These are deadly seizures, right? These are people that are really addicted to alcohol. This is for people who, like me, had a bit of a psychological dependency, feeling you need that one or two drinks every night, you know, to calm down, to feel better. And we're making excuses, right? And then kind of down the line, notice that this is not really healthy for us. Then this is absolutely for you. Which brings me to step number one, understand the impact that alcohol has on your body, right? Now, in the past, there were some studies that showed, hey, there might be some benefits to having a drink here and there, a glass of wine, right? Resveratrol, sounds great. Heart healthy, fantastic. Alcohol, maybe it helps with blood clotting, you know, making us, uh, decreasing our risk for stroke and heart attacks. Unfortunately, reading all the studies, and I went through all the literature, especially the newer studies, showed that there is no net benefit to drinking alcohol, period. Mm -hmm. Drinking alcohol is not healthy by any means, and that's fine. Let's just be honest about it. Why do we drink alcohol? It makes us feel a certain way, right? I mean, people that drink non-alcoholic beer, I don't understand how that works at all. It wouldn't be for me. Understanding that, being honest to ourselves, I think is the first and most important thing, right? And then we have to understand alcohol is linked to many diseases, ranging from liver disease to cardiovascular disease to cancer. And that's actually a really big one. To cerebrovascular disease, stroke and, all, and, and, and such things, right? But also what else does it do? It lowers your testosterone, right? That's really bad. It also decreases fertility. And that's really important for people that are you know, trying to conceive, you know, having uh, children, very bad thing. And it, it actually is quite a bit impact on that. And let's talk about skin for a second, you know. I mentioned before that it has some bad effects on your skin. And the studies have shown that it really impacts um, facial lines. So you get more facial lines when you drink regularly. Under eye puffiness, and that's many of us have actually noticed that when we drank a lot, that there's more puffiness there and that actually gets worse over time. Mid-face volume loss, also a bit one, big one. And then blood vessel formation. You know, that doesn't look very good. So these are kind of things where suddenly you look like you need to be photoshopped. That's not good. The good news is when you, you know, decrease your drinking, I'm not saying you have to cut it out completely, unless of course you have an addiction disorder, then I would recommend that under the guidance of a professional, as I mentioned. But just decreasing it, making it infrequently, I'm going to talk about exactly what that means, makes a big difference and your skin will get a lot better, right? Point number two, select a two week period of no distractions for a sobriety time. What does that mean? So you select a two week period where there's no holidays, birthdays, vacations, any excuse that you have getting together socially to have a drink. And it's always like this, right? You know, you are having good intentions. Oh, I'm probably not gonna drink tonight, but then there's a special occasion. It's a holiday. People make you feel bad. There's social pressure and you end up having that drink or two or three. But pick a time, a two week time where there's no distractions, where you can really have a sobriety time where you don't have any alcohol at all, right? In that time, I highly recommend to do a workout every day. This can be a run, so it can be cardiovascular. This can be a workout with weights. My schedule is usually four days a week now that I work up with weights and then three or four days where I do cardio. So sometimes I do weights and cardio on the same day. You can alternate these as well. But you select this two-week period, no distractions, and cut out all the alcohol. That's your sobriety time. Step number three, you actually start this a week before your um, two-week sobriety time. Uh, document. Document your sleep time and quality and how you feel in the morning, right? That's very important. Now, when I say document, I'm probably one of the laziest people you meet when it comes to writing things down. I don't have a diary or anything like that. I did this, so I just uh, uh, put it into my phone. So I picked one week before I knew I was gonna start to cut out alcohol for two weeks. And I just wrote this in the morning, um, having my morning coffee. And as I'm checking my emails, went to my calendar on my phone and just wrote down quickly how many hours of sleep I've gotten how many times I woke up at night and how I felt in the morning. That's pretty much it. It could be one or two words for these things and just a number, very easy, right? But it helps you later to really see the difference. And here's the interesting thing on this. Sleep time um, is not the same always. So when we drink alcohol, we influence our sleep um, architecture. That means we shortening certain sleep stages, which is a really bad thing. And you could get seven to eight hours of sleep and thinking, hey, that's fantastic, seven, but you could still feel lousy in the morning. And that is because the quality of your sleep is not good. So you sleep enough duration, the time might be fine, 
but you're feeling lousy. And that's because alcohol and medications as well can disrupt your sleep architecture, right? The second thing is waking up middle of the night. Now, I know this for sure. If I have a drink or two at night, I guarantee you, I wake up at least once at night to go pee, right? The alcohol's a diuretic, let's face it. Um, sometimes you wake up twice at night and that is highly disruptive. So again, I might get seven hours of sleep, but waking up twice at night, having a bit of a hard time falling asleep again, then again, having a disrupted sleep architecture, I felt lousy. So I documented that and then you document while you are on your two-week sobriety time, how you feel and how this progresses. And it's very interesting to look at this after. And then I would recommend one more week after your sobriety time, after you have a new uh, pattern where you don't drink regularly and you drink less. And we're going to talk about that too. Then step number four. So after your two week of complete sobriety, commit to drink only one drink maximum per event that you go to. And it shouldn't be regularly, but let's say there's a birthday or let's say there's a holiday and you then commit to just having one drink, right? Don't have that second or third drink. One thing you'll notice, having had that two week time of uh, this sobriety where you didn't drink at all, you're going to be a lot more sensitive to alcohol. Let's face it. Why are we drinking alcohol? We drink alcohol because it makes us feel a certain way, right? Guarantee you, this works for most people. Then you have a couple of sips first. You drink very slowly. You have this one drink, this glass of wine, let's say on, on some occasion you're going to feel it. So when you slow it down and you start to feel this effect that kind of we associate with drinking alcohol, this feeling of relaxation and all that, you also start to notice if you were to drink more than this one drink, you probably feel lousy the next day, right? But stick to this one drink and that's absolutely socially acceptable. Don't let anybody pressure you to having more drinks than this one drink. If they do, make them watch this video, okay? Really commit to that and then also make it infrequently. So that means personally, I would recommend no more than once, maximum twice a week to have a drink, right? But also maybe have a time, a couple of weeks when you when you don't drink at all. And I give an example. We were on vacation, and um, you know, then we usually you know at night sit together. It was a beautiful night outside in the countryside, and we would have a glass of wine. And we did this like three nights in a row. Just I had one glass of wine, felt fantastic, was good. But on the third night, we sat together, and I didn't feel like drinking, and that was fine too. What you do then? Just get a glass of water, ice water, something you know, or something that has some flavor in it. It doesn't really matter, but it's fine. And a lot of times, all we're missing is having something to hold in our hands, right? This is psychological thing that makes us relax in the situation, right? So that's something to do. It's like this little crutch, you know. You don't really need the alcohol. You need to have this drink, sit with your friends, and really listen to your own, you know, uh, uh, listen to how you feel. And if you don't feel like having a drink, don't have one, right? So this is something that I think is a lot easier having had this two weeks of complete sobriety. It works for most people extremely well, right? Now, of course, then, you know, we look at people that are very fit and are very um, uh, active and we look at all these actors promoting drinks and there's a bit of a negative influence. Advertising is something that a very bad influence here, but I've always had an issue having actors uh, trying to be role models. I don't see them as role models. We see these muscular people like The Rock promoting a tequila brand, right? When you look at some of his posts, I mean, it looks like The Rock is drinking a big shot of tequila every night. I don't know if that's even true. He certainly looks like someone who has, um, who's muscular, probably has enough testosterone. I don't know if it's all his own testosterone. I don't know him personally, but he has a lot of it, right? Does he really drink every night? And even if this works for him, I guarantee you this doesn't work for most people. So I don't recommend falling into that pattern. I also don't see celebrities and actors as role models. I mean, they want to make a buck like, just like anybody else. I had a big issue during our recent pandemic of suddenly having celebrities lecturing us on our health and uh, behaviors and things we should do. I thought that was ridiculous, right? But anyway, take it for what it is. Um, Advertising is its own world. Don't believe everything that's advertised to you. Make your own judgments. But having an infrequent schedule, not even schedule, an infrequent time of drinking after is important. And there might be a couple of weeks when you don't drink at all. And I think it'll be a lot easier having had this two, week of, two weeks of complete sobriety, seeing how you feel. Because one thing I noticed for myself, my skin got better when I drink, when I just start drinking more infrequently, right? Before I drank one or two drinks every night. Now I'm having a drink maximum once a week, actually. Sometimes there's two weeks where I don't drink at all, right? And it made a huge difference. So skin-wise, my skin got a lot better. And you see this in people that quit drinking. They got this glow to their skin. They're starting to look better, right? I noticed uh, losing body fat. I, it was much easier for me now to stay lean, much easier. And since I test my own labs, after I started uh, regularly drinking every night, my testosterone went up, right? And that was very motivating for me as well. So I look better, I, I, I feel better, and psychologically I feel better, I'm more motivated. I'm looking forward to working out in the morning now. When I have a drink or two at night, I'm dreading it, right? So your quality of workout, your functioning, your mental acuity is highly improved. So I think this is something that uh, is very valuable. So I highly recommend to try this out. And again, 
most of us, we don't have issues with necessarily alcohol addiction, but there is this psychological thing that tells us, mm, I'm really craving this drink, and then we start making excuses. So hopefully this was helpful. If so, uh, please um, subscribe and leave a comment or question. I really read those, and they're very valuable. I base a lot of my content on uh, questions and comments that people leave, but it's also valuable for other people uh, reading these. So I think there's a lot of learning that can happen this way.